This uh, devotional series that, that, that God has placed in my heart to share with you guys as we want to increase our, our, our devotion for God, that this year would be a little bit different, that we would echale um, ganas, you know, put more effort fo forward and, uh, and do things, you know, for, for, for the glory of God. And um, uh, two weeks ago, we talked about devotion. What, what was that? And it's to be loyal, it's, to, uh, it's to, be, to have love and to be enthusiastic about something. And then we use metaphors as us being a phone and then using a measure of the cable being worship and praise and God being the power source through his word. So those are some of the examples that we used last week, uh, two weeks ago. And the three attributes of God's power that's dependable, it's transferable, and it's available. And I like saying these things a couple times so you can be reminded because uh, uh, really easily we can get out of the loop of, of what it is to be a Christian. We can be forgetful. And there's days you forget to pray or, or days you forget to even consider God to be primary in any Thing that you do and the choices you make. So it's good to, for, for us to be, uh, uh, to regather and, and, and uh, recap some of the stuff that we've been learning in here. But um, nonetheless, it's, it's, all, it's all to help build. You know, at the end of the year last year, we talked about our, our gifts, you know, developing the gifts and God gives us the power to, 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 to develop them. So go with me to Ephesians 4 chapter 11, and today's main message will be about how necessary God's word is and how, how to access it. Um, and, and this is what we're here for. As a church, we come together, and it's the, the reason why you come here this morning, so we can help equip you to do things that you wouldn't be able to do on, on, on your own. Um, we're here to be accountable to each other. We're here to grow together. We're here to learn together. So this year, you're going to have to, you know, maybe bump heads with some people here, but nonetheless, you're going to grow, and you're going to learn to love your brother in Christ. Um, so this is at the core of why, why we are here. And Ephesians 4, which we've read this before, but it's always a good reminder to to read some verses because I believe God sometimes speaks to us through verses and it isn't the first time, the second time, the third time you read it. Sometimes it's like the tenth time that you read it. Sometimes it's a verse that God just gives you for months. For a whole year, God will have you concentrated and focused on a verse where you think, oh, I think I got it the first time. But it isn't until you really start to believe it, apply faith to it, practice it, that, that you begin to grow in understanding what God's word is for you. So Ephesians 4, uh, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11, and it, and it reads as this. Now these are the gifts Christ gave to the church, the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, and teachers. Here we can add different gifts that we all bring to the table. Whether you're a mechanic, a plumber, sound engineer, marketing manager, banker, all the things that we bring forth is for the edification, for the help of the church. And I'll add those in there because I'll explain later why. Because we think that it is only the responsibility of what's listed here to be a witness to Christ. But all through our gifts, we, 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 we um, help to edify and we help to, to, to preach the word of God. And it says in 12, their responsibility is to equip God's people to do his work and build up the church. The body of Christ this will continue until we all come to such unity in our faith, to come in such unity in our faith that we would be in agreement with one another. And it says, and the knowledge of God's son, that we, will con that we will mature in the Lord, measuring up to the full and complete standard of Christ. Let me read this in the message version. And the message version is to get the concept of what the, the, the author here is trying to tell us. Paul here in, in, in his letter to, the, to, to Ephesus. He says, he handed out gifts of the apostles, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher to train Christ's followers in skilled servant work, working within Christ's body, the church. And so we're all moving rhythmic, rhythmically. We're all moving in a rhythm together and easily with each other. That you would look around and be like, man, it, it kind of is hard sometimes to work with certain people. But, but striving towards this unity that we would be able to function in a rhythm for God's glory. In unity. Working easily with each other. I understand at first some people are very difficult to, to be around with. But you ever thought that maybe God put that person in your life to, to teach you how to be patient? How to be forgiving? How to turn it down a couple notches? For you to be humble and be a servant to another person, there's a reason why we're all here. At the core of that, God has placed you here with purpose. 
And, I, and here we, we're discovering this. And, and, and to, con, to finish this last verse here. Easily with each other, efficient and graceful in response to God's son. Fully mature adults, fully developed within and without, fully alive like Christ. Fully alive, fully charged, fully devoted, fully in love, fully enthusiastic. Because that's what Jesus was and still is. Fully loyal. Those are the things that we are here trying to strive to be like as we increase our devotion this year. That it isn't just in our spirit that we're praying, but it's also in our attitudes. It's also in the way you show up to church. That, hey, I am willing to work. I am willing to participate. And if I can't, then I put my grain into the, into the basket and I support missions. And I support the efforts of the church. Not just in prick. In prayer, but also in, in, in a positive attitude. I think that's going to be so crucial for a lot of people here this morning, is that we would have a, a renewance of our mind, our perspective of what God has for your life this year. That it isn't going to be the same as last year. That we would continue to grow and mature. This is an ongoing process. We don't reach this perfection until we come before the glory of God. And we reach a, st a state of glorification. So, but we will strive to it because God has called us to do these things. So not just in our spirit do we need to feel good, but also in our attitudes. We need to be charged up. We need to stay plugged into his word. And I ask you guys, other than Sundays and prayer, the, the 5 a.m. prayer doesn't count. When was the last time you plugged in? Ask your neighbor, when was the last time you plugged in? And answer, answer honestly. I think for me, well, obviously, because I prepared the message, I was praying this morning, praying last night, right? It's, it's easy to do it here when we do it together, right? That's, that's easy. And it's easy to do it when we do a congregational fast, congregational prayer, because, hey, we're all coming together. But on your alone time, are, are, are you completing what God has asked you to do? It, sometimes it takes, it takes uh, um, a step, to, to take a step backwards and, and to reevaluate this. Um, my example here, which I was surprised, but I, I believe it was two weeks ago, um, the youth, we got together and we cleaned the whole church. And I was surprised how many people, I was scared at first because we, we were supposed to show up at 8 a.m. and I got here at 8 on the dot and the only person here with the doors open was Angelo. And I was like, dang, we're going to be here for a couple hours. But little by little, they all started to show up. And little by little, it was about, man, maybe 30, 40 of us. And we were able to clean the whole entire church, clean the second floor, the attic, the parking lot, the playground, the tra everything, the bathrooms, all that stuff within an hour, hour, hour and a half. The efforts together, how successful can we be when we work in unity, easily with each other? Now, if you were to ask me that when I was a youth back in the day, I would have laughed in your face. I would have been like, my Saturday? My, my Looney Tunes that I'm supposed to be watching or whatever. <laughs> my football games, college football on Saturdays. They're like, nah, dude, that's too much. And then like last night, not last night, but yesterday, the sound guy, uh, director asked me, hey, can you help us with this? And I'm like, surely I'll be here. Now, sound engineer, I'm not. I love the sound and all that, but I got two hands. I got a positive attitude. I got two feet. I went upstairs, cleaned the attic. I moved things around. We cleaned the closet. We connected the new mics. That's why we're testing these out, see if they work this morning. Yeah, I can hear myself. <laughs> He's not paying attention to the word. <laughs> Amen. But, you know, but, but it's having a positive attitude. It's having, hey, I, I, I'm a willingness. Yeah, I don't want to give up my Saturday. Who does? But, but seeing that, that you do that, even in places where it, it takes a sacrifice, God honors that. God sees that. And, man, we were on, on Friday when they were giving the word, you know, man, it, 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 was, it was kind of crazy to see, you know, God has offered us so much, yet what do we give back to God? And one of the youth texted me like, dang, I feel convicted. And I texted that person. We were texting during service. I know it's bad, but we're like, good, because me too. I feel convicted too. Because there's always something we could always do for God. They're, they're, even if it's just a helping hand, even if it's a prayer, even if it's just being positive about the vision of the church, supporting, about, man, I, I, I mean, I don't understand why we're doing this, but we're, yeah, let's buy the cameras. How expensive? Oh, that's a lot of money. But hey, let's do it because we want to ensure the safety of our people in this public place. 
So we have to have a positive attitude as we continue to grow and come in fellowship with each other, fully mature adults developing and fully growing together like a family, like the unit that we are. And God gives us that power. And this is another verse that we're going to repeat because we said this one uh, two weeks ago, 2 Peter 1.3. And like I mentioned before, sometimes we'll read verses a couple times because it's not going to be the first time that you get it, the second time, but it'll probably be the third time that you'll start to understand this, the, the power behind these verses. So 2 Peter 1, 3, and it says, by his divine power, his, God has given us everything we need for living a godly life. Think about how ungodly you were this week. Think about all those situations you faced that wasn't designed or meant to be lived without God. Sure, you sinned. Sure, you fell. Sure, sure, that's me right here. But did I repent for it after that day? Surely I did because I felt guilty. I felt convicted. I felt like, God, forgive me for my sins, for the errors that I've said, the language that I spoke, the, the faults that I've made. It's the conviction that we learn to live with. We have received all this by coming to know him. How do you come to know him? Through his word, to come to the church, by praying, reading his, uh, his word, as I mentioned. The one who has called us by himself, by means of his marvelous glory and excellence, and because of his glory and excellence, he has given us his great and precious promises. His word. That God is bound to his word that he's given every single one of you here this morning. His great and precious promises. These <clears throat> These are the promises that enable you to share his divine nature. That through his word, that God is breathing his word into your life, you are able to participate in his divine nature and escape the world's corruption caused by human desires. So that we would increase our knowledge. And God keeps his promises. God doesn't make promises he can't keep. If God has promised these words onto your life, hold on to them. Believe them. Credit faith to it. Participate. Challenge God. Be like, God, I'm, 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 ch- I'm putting all this forward in faith, and God, I believe that you'll speak to me through it. There's a reason why there's bitter Christians out there, because they have yet to apply faith to what they're learning in here. Anyone has two ears in here and can listen to me speak, but to believe it in your heart and to walk forward in faith and apply it, that, that's where it gets a little risky. You're like, man, I might fall right here. Kind of like Peter on the water. But faith he had, and he, and, and he walked until he took his eyes off and fell in the water. Some of y'all looking around because y'all don't read your Bible. <laughs> like, what, Peter walked in the water? Read your Bible, and you'll get that reference. But God is bound to his word. God gives us his word. God is the word. Go, go with me to John 1.1. 1, 1. Here... Before you want to do anything in your life, primary to any decision you want to make, anything that you want to do in your life or any vision that you have, you need to get more of God's word in your life. This is crucial for everything you plan on doing this year. Because in John 1, 1, it says, in the beginning, the word already existed. The word was with God and the word was God. So you having access to your Bible, that's God right there. God has already spoken. He's already put guidelines. It's funny how people say, well, if God would only speak to me, I bet you he has. Read his word. Well, what do you mean I'm supposed to tithe? I'm supposed to give my money? I worked for this. Don't ask me. Ask God. He's already talked about that. Premarital sex, fornication. There's youth that come and talk to me. Hey, I want to live with my girl and see how that works out for a couple of years. Okay. And what do you think? Well, ask God. God's very clear on those standards. And some of y'all smile at it because y'all know, because it's, it happens quite often, right? And, and, and it's a question of whatever it could be. People want people to say something. And then it's funny because then you go to prayer at 5 o'clock in the morning or wherever you're at, and God doesn't say anything. He doesn't need to. That's why your, your prayer is empty because you haven't read your word to apply the faith that happens in prayer. So a lot of people think, oh, I'm only talking to me. Yeah, you are just talking to yourself. You haven't read God's word. You haven't read what God wants to bless you with, what guidelines he's placed you in, what Christian ethics and behavioral boundaries you should have, how you should speak, how you should honor, how you should respect, how you should love, be humble, be faithful, be gentle, have self-control. It's all there. 
People try to act like, oh, God doesn't speak to me. They want some divine audible voice or, or some like, you know, crazy experience or they're speaking in tongues and levitating. God has already spoken to you. God has, God has already given you everything you need for this life. And I, when I was thinking about the, <laughs> the, you know, when people question about having sex before marriage and so forth, you know, I've been reading a lot of uh, Proverbs. You put Proverbs up there. I've been reading a lot of Proverbs um, for all, all my prayers in the morning. And, and I like where it says here in Proverbs 5 it said, let, the wife, let your wife be fountain of blessing for you. Rejoice in the wife of your youth. But young people these days, they want to try all the flavors like it's Baskin Robbins. They want to, oh, let's see how you kiss. Oh, let's see how you kiss. Oh, well, you look cute. You look. It says here, rejoice with the wife of your youth. You, some people go their whole lives thinking nobody loves me or I can't, can't find a boy. It's because you're looking in the wrong places. That person, the one that God placed for you has been there 10, 20 years already. You're going into your middle age and you're still thinking, well, what happened? You're over here trying to try every flavor when God already put the person for you. Now, I was for somebody this morning. I don't know who. That's all I'm going to say. It came to me, and I was like, man, some of these young people need to start thinking about that one. Sorry, it's not a youth service. It's not a youth service. I know. But, but rejoice is a beautiful Bible verse. Got young people, everyone in here, read Proverbs. If I would have read Proverbs as a young person, man, I would have made a lot of different, more, different choices. The Book of Wisdoms. And for you young men that battle with, like, lust, as, as, as so do I and did I, you know, man, it talks a lot about that kind of stuff in there and how to be wise in those areas. So young person, young wo- wo- woman and man, uh, breed Proverbs and apply and, and, and put it in your, in your prayer devotionals. But anyways, let's jump back on task because we kind of took a U-turn there. Um, so we, we, people question, right? We talked about questioning God. And, and um, hold on. Okay, yeah. and then we question God, we come to prayer, and then God doesn't say anything. It's because God has already spoken through his word, right? And like a good father, he knows when to stop speaking. It's kind of like, like when my wife tells me, okay, oh, take out the trash, and I'm like, oh, okay, I'll do it in five minutes. And then I'll prolong it, and then I'll prolong it, and then next thing you know, my daughter's playing with the trash on the floor. It's like, oh, man. If I would have just done it the first time. If I would have just stopped being lazy and just got, got my butt off the couch, or you know, it, 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 that's what it takes. God doesn't have to repeat himself. He's already said it. And he wants to reveal his purpose, his life for you through his word. And we get that when we read John, John 1.1 because God, God, God is so, I want to say dope with this, but he's so tight about this that he was like, you know what? It's not just that I'm going to tell them, but I'm going to show them. And that's where we get Jesus in John 1.14. If you could put that up there. And it says, though, the word became human, and NIV will say flesh, and made his home amongst us, and he, he was full of unfailing love and faithfulness, and we have seen his glory, the glory of the Father's one and only Son. That God not only just told you through his word, but he also showed you through Jesus Christ. That God would come and take human form. God, Jesus, who has always been with, with God in the beginning, before creation. And just add a little bit of theology here, because a lot of people struggled with this. To, to, when, when John here is writing, he had both a Greek and a Jewish audience. You know, to the Greeks, they think of gods like superhumans. They don't think of them as supreme, uh, uh, ultimate authority, ultimate sovereignty, ultimate control, because they had gods like Zeus, Hermes, Hercules, and all these other people that are supposed to be human-like. So to them, they thought, well, reason and logos, the word, goes above all that. So when they would hear that the word, the logos, would become flesh, it it was very much like an eye-opener, a revelation for them. Now for the Jews, they thought of God too high. How can the God who's revealed in the Old Testament through all his power, through all his majesty, all his glory, how can he come become human with us now? That's why I was offensive to the Jews when they looked at Jesus and said, I am God. He said, what the, yeah, right, you crazy? God is supposed to be this supreme authority. So to the people in here that you think God is too low or God is too high, God is here now. He's both. God has made himself to be amongst us. And the authority and the supremacy that he is as Jewish thinkers thought of God, but also with how the Greek thinkers thought about God is amongst us. 
not in a form like God, but actually God. The word became flesh. That is the supremacy of what happened there when we think about Christology and the study of Jesus Christ. That the word became flesh. That he came not only just to tell you, but to show you how to live your life. And us as here as proclaiming Christians, we should be reflecting that. If not, you're in the wrong faith. You're like, what? This is what we're trying to do? Christian. To be Christ-like. Christianity. That's what we're here for, to strive, to bring us to full maturity, helping one another in edification, to show the world that God exists, that God loves, that God restores, God heals, God protects, God does, does it all for us. And that's the faith that we want to proclaim here. And then go to John 6, 30, John 6, 63. And th this is where the word becomes very, very important in here today because we need to be plugged in. And when you start to plug in, perhaps... The change is very gradual, but eventually you, you, you start to understand, and God starts to reveal. And, and this is a, a very strong verse for this. It says, the Spirit alone gives eternal life. Human effort accomplishes nothing. Human effort accomplishes nothing. And the very words, this is Jesus speaking, and the very words I have spoken to you are spirit and life. When you start to do a study here about spirit, the closest English word to spirit, which, which when you go back to the, to the origination, it's called pneuma. That's why there's pneumatology, the study of the Holy Spirit. Well, pneuma means uh, like wind or breath, God breath. So when Jesus is telling him the words that I'm giving you, and the Bible is the word, God is the word, and it says, I spoke to you, you are, the, the, words, the words I've spoken to you are spirit and life. They are breath. They are a wind, a refreshment of who I am speaking life into you. And that's what the word is telling us this, this morning. That when, when you read the word, it isn't just some mundane or boring act. It's God blowing his breath into your life. That just changed some people's perspectives this morning. That God is speaking his very word into you because this isn't just words that are written by man. It's authored by God. God used the instruments to, to bring this word about, but it's authored by God. And there's Bible verses that say God's, man, I was going to read like, like really fast, like 20 Bible verses that say what the word is. And it was, I was like, man, that's not that's too much. We'll do that another day. But it says God's word is unfailing. God's word edifies. God's word sanctifies. God's word heals. There's a lot of things that the word of God does. So when he says here that I have spoken, that I'm speaking to you now actively, it's God breathed. It's God's breath. It's giving you life. It's resuscitating that dead spirit you have inside of you, right? Because some, some mornings it's a little more difficult than others. Sometimes we're in a struggle city and we're, we forget what's going on and, and our world is upside down. And then you forget that, hey, man, God's word was right there all along. You just neglected it. You, for, if you neglected to reach for it. Your conscience told you to pray for it, to read for it, but you're like, your flesh, the flesh will dominate. That's why fasting is important, so you could dominate your flesh. So that's why, oh, this is the point I was going to make here. That's why the enemy fights you so hard to make sure that you don't read your word because he knows that, you, that when you get the breath of God, uh, God's breath in your life, the enemy is defeated. Can you imagine what your finances would look like if it was God breathed? If you applied the word of God, when God breathes into your marriage, into your relationships, into your jobs, and God, that's the word. Apply the word to, to your life. That's God's breath saying, here I am. Let me, let me apply myself to it. Because on human effort is worth nothing. What was it again? It said, human effort accomplishes nothing. You may think you're going somewhere. I like the example that Adrian gave on Friday. You know, he talked about, you know, God taking the steering wheel. And, and, and you're just there and you're just applying the gas and the brake. But, but really it is. It's, it's, it's an act of faith. God's trying to take you to a destination, a purpose that he's designed for your life. Those gifts that we've hidden in our, in our attics trying to take out those dead things and put things that only he could put in, revive, resuscitate, God breathed, but then we pump the brakes. And then we think, oh, well, not yet. Or we take the wheel and we go wherever we want to go. 
I challenge you this morning. Let God take the steering wheel, <laughs> as much as cliche as that sounds, and step on the gas. Start reading your Bible. Apply faith to it. Apply, apply, apply. Practice it. Man, this, this whole 30-day congregational fast and prayer, man, I really, really opened my eyes to a lot of things, a spiritual lens to a lot of things. I, I, I encourage you guys to share, share that enthusiasm with me. Share that devotion. Share that vision. Share the things that we can accomplish together when we work in unity, when we start to begin to mature with one another, easily working with, the, with one another. And the enemy will fight you so hard. And we think of the enemy like, oh, el diablo me está atacando. Sometimes it's yourself. It's your flesh. Because the flesh doesn't want to get up early to pray. The flesh doesn't want to read the Bible, wants to watch Netflix. The flesh wants to go to the movies. The flesh wants to eat. I, I love food. That's what the flesh wants. But you have to learn to dominate your flesh or your flesh will control you. Your flesh will control your attitude. Your anger. Sometimes you'll do, man, you'll make some dumb mistakes in your life and you'll be like, what the heck was I thinking? Because you weren't. You allowed your, your flesh to dominate you in all the areas of your life. Learn to practice these things. Learn to practice a fast. Learn to tell your flesh, no, I'm in control. God is giving me the authority. The spirit of God is being <clears throat> breathed on me through the word. That will give you the control to overcome these things. Because power we all need. Everyone here will need the power of God to live a Christian life. I promise you that. The moment you think it's otherwise, qu quickly you will fail. So that's what happens when God breathes in our lives. Dead things come alive. Those dead things that you have up in there, <laughs> God's going to take them out. He's going to take those things that are ungodly and take them out. And he's going to put godly things in you. Godly things of generosity, godly things of forgiveness, of humility, of things that you, man, I, you look back and you're like, who the heck am I now? Right? And what some of you guys went through a full 180 when you re, uh, came to Christ. I've seen it in the youth. I, like that. I'm like, damn, I'm, I'm surprised. I'm shocked. But like I was saying, we came here and cleaned one Saturday. And I was like, man, I'm surprised. Years ago, at the beginning, when I was the first youth pastor, the first couple months, there was like 10 kids in here. And which of them served were all the musicians. So I was like, all right, guys, it's, they were playing for nobody. Really, they were playing for me and like two other kids. And then they would get off, and I would come up here, and it was just us. But it's a beautiful thing to see what we can do together when we work together. <clears throat> so God wakes these takes these dead things out. Hebrews 4.12. <clears throat> so we can see how he does this. <clears throat> Excuse me. Hebrews 4.12. For the word of God is alive and powerful. Alive. Uh, li it isn't dead. It's active. The word of God. When you read the word of God, it's the actual breath of God breathing into your life, giving you power to do things that you wouldn't be able to do unless you had God's power. For the word of God is alive and powerful. It is sharper than the sharpest double-edged sword. It has no dull side. Cutting between soul and spirit, between joint and marrow, it exposes our innermost thoughts and desires. NIV will say it judges our innermost thoughts and desires. So God's performing surgery. When you read his word and you feel convicted, it's not me up here. I'm just telling you what the Bible says. Guys, God, and surgery, scary. Whoever thinks about going into surgery, going under the knife, right? But the main goal of surgery isn't for, for you to be left open and left to die. It's so that you would come out healthier, better, resolved. That tumor is taken out of you. That cancer is whatever. That, that organ that was killing you is taken out. The, it's like a scalpel. The sharpest instrument will be the word of God for your life. Discerning your heart with the precision, the accuracy of how the word of God is. It's a, man, sometimes it is, it's crazy how the word of God just speaks to people in here. And it's, it's not me. I, none, none of this is me. It is just the word of God accurately. Just let me take that. 
let me open you up a little bit. And then <laughs> full open heart surgery. That's what the word of God does when we come in here. Taking those things out and putting things in that you need. So God's word diagnoses, diagnoses the condition of a man with a surgeon's precision and lays open the heart and accurately discerns the spiritual health. There's, there's a reason why people don't, don't like coming to church. It could be offensive. When you tell people, man, you, you suck as a person. Hey, oh, you sin. Like, for the millennials to understand me, you suck as a person, and you need God. Because anything you'll ever do will always fall short of God's glory. And the wages for you sucking like a person is death. <laughs> right? I'm going to start using that word now. Because there's people that suck. <laughs> I face them all the time. But we need God in our lives. God performs his heart surgery. God opens us up and it discerns us. And I like this last part. It exposes our innermost thoughts and desires. The things that you will never express to anyone, not even your spouse, the secrecy that you may have, your innermost whatever, filth that you could have, or your whatever it is. Those are the things that God will discern. And that's where me and the other you felt, man, we felt convicted. <laughs> because it was God speaking to our hearts through his word. He used the person, but it was ultimately God's power and word that spoke to us. <clears throat> performing that surgery. Revealing to us our hearts. And now you can look at the Bible differently. That isn't just a historical fact. But it's a book of faith. It's a book of miracles. It's a book of power. It's a book of God's actual living breath that will enable you to do things that you've been tasked to do, but you can't do without. Then you'll know, man, I, I need more of God's word in my life. It's going to be primary to anything I ever want to do. Primary. Before anything else, we need to get more of God's word in our life. Some of you will be like, well, you need to pray more. You need to fast more. You need to listen to more Christian music, worship more. Before any of that, if you tell an unbeliever, oh, you just need to pray. I see a lot of people say, oh, I'm, I'm praying for you, bro. Praying for Okay. <laughs> All right. Oh, China right now. Oh, let's just pray for them. Right? Well, of course that we should do that. But, but, man, before any of that, what do you mean? They don't know who they're praying to. They don't even know what they're praying about. When they worship, they're like, oh, it's just nice, it's nice music. It's the word of God that should be primary to anything we do. Because that's going to be God's word for you. That way, when you pray, you know you're not praying to yourself. You're praying saying, God, thank you for speaking to my life. Contrary to saying, God, I want you to speak to me. Help me. No, it's like, God, I thank you because you've already saved my soul. You saved my family, you saved my marriage, you saved my job, you saved my economy, you saved my life, everything that I am. Grateful am I when I walk forward in prayer. Kind of a different, different perspective that you get. And then it's funny because it, it judges our innermost thoughts and desires. So there's some things that you're going to read because you're going to be like, well, God never told me that I can't sleep with girls before I'm married. I'm like, well, yes, he did. And then you're going to begin to read and read, and there's going to be certain things you're going to be like, dang, I wish I would never read that. Now I can't cuss. Dang, now I can't do this. Man, now i got to be nice to people. Right? That happens. There's some things where you would have been, as a non-believer, you would have been better off not walking in the air because now you know. Now you know what you've been tasked with. Now you know the responsibility that you have. Now you know what you should do. But guilty conscience you'll have, of course. <laughs> That's conviction. Because we are all guilty before God. Every single, every single human. Guilt, the most holiest person you can think of, guilty before God. And we need God continuously in our life. And we do that by getting God's power through his word that is perfect to us, that sanctifies us, that heals us, restores us, encourages us. There's a lot of things that God's word does. Learn to find more devotion for God's word in your life. <clears throat> let me give you three points here, and then I'll, I'll, I'll let you go because I know you guys want to watch football today, as do I. But three words about <clears throat> the word coming alive. Three points. The first one, faith activates the word of God. Let's go to Hebrews 4.2. And these, I'll do these quick. Hebrews 4.2. For indeed the gospel 
was preached to us as well as them, but the word which they had heard did not profit them. So yes, I came to TDE in the morning, and I heard the word, but it didn't profit me. Apply, apply this. Which they heard, but did not profit. Not being mixed with faith in those who heard it. That's New King James Version. I like that version. Not being mixed. We can all hear God's word. We can all listen to God's word. But are we proclaiming it with faith? Are we believing it? Are we acting out on it? Instead of posting trash online, can you post like, hey, I'm walking in faith and I believe that God restores, that God is faithful, that God is going to prosper me and bless me this year? Mix it with faith. A lot of people come to church and listen to the word of God, but they will all or we possibly ref- neglect to add faith to it. It's a quite a, it'll activate the word of God when you apply faith to it. That it isn't who's up here speaking. In the Old Testament, God used a donkey to speak to someone. So as the dummy that's up here on stage that stands before you as an instrument, but apply faith to it. Because you can think, man, I, I was thinking about this. You know, the word of God is there. Because I've been to a lot of different churches, and, and it's easy for me to step in my mindset and start to judge. You know, when I see, like, their pastor with, like, a bed sheet down to their knees and trying to look all hipster. Or in other pastors are more, uh, um, like, uh, super traditional. Everyone's suited up, and you're wearing a T-shirt and a pants and jeans, and they're, like, kind of judging you, like, oh, that's your best for God. Right? But... Because you allowed that fear, that doubt, that criticism, that judgment to come in, you you failed to receive God's word for your life. I've been a bunch of places, the churches where I'm thinking like, man, this is their church. But God's word is there. Right? Why is a pastor wearing a big old t-shirt down to his knees? Well, why are you judging? God's word is there. Well, while he's all suited up, man, everyone's looking at me all crazy. But the word of God is there. People will walk in through this door and say, man, this church is too small. I'm going to go to a bigger church. Or people will be like, oh, man, this church is too big. I like smaller churches where we get to know each other very, very personal. It's never going to be perfect for you. But you have to come in here with the mindset thinking that God has a word for me, and it's alive, it's powerful, and I'm going to apply it, and I'm going to mix faith into it. That regardless of the pastor's preaching sucked that morning, it didn't suck, is that you didn't listen to the word. Other days it might, yeah, I'll probably rile you up. You'll get excited. You'll get happy. Other days you'll be like, man, I feel convicted. Man, I feel tired. Man, but the word of God is there. These words that we read this morning, write them down. Rewatch it on YouTube or whatever and apply them. Know that the God's word is double-edged sword, can pierce through anything, splitting. The, it's a joint and marrow. That means it's going to get in you where it's uncomfortable, splitting things where it's, Man, God, oh, I can't sin no more. God, I feel convicted. God, I can't cuss no more. I can't do this. Because God's word is going to get in there. A double-edged sword, sharper than anything. That was the first part. Faith activates the word of God. Second part, revelation activates faith. And we won't dwell on this too much since we're running short on time. But in the Bible, there's two words for the word. There's logos and there's rema, or rema. Logos and rema. Rema is more of a revelation that's revealed to you. Because you can read the word once and you read the word, the written actual word of God. But it's another thing when it's revealed to you in your spirit. When revelation hits you and you get your aha moment. Oh, now I know why I'm here. Now I know why I have faith. Now I know why I need God. Now I know why I pray. You receive these aha moments in your life, and that revelation activates your faith. The third one, because I want to go through these quick. Meditation activates revelation. So faith will activate the word of God. Revelation will activate your faith, and meditation will activate your, the revelation. The last Bible verse for today, Joshua 1.7. Because meditation we will have to all do as we dwell. Dwell on the word of God. He, Joshua 1, 1, 7. Be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the instructions Moses gave you. Do not deviate from them, turning either to the right or to the left. Then you will be successful in everything you do. 
Raise your hand if you want to be successful in life. So we could pray for the ones that didn't raise their hand. All right, one, two, three. We all want to be successful, right? Then you will be successful in everything you do. Study this book of instruction continually. Study. That's like the fifth phone of this book. Instruction continually. Meditate on it day and night. Meditate. Meditate on it continuously. We were, we were the, morning, the, the word this morning was cease, uh, pray without ceasing. Right? Right, Caesar? Pray without ceasing. Do things continuously. Meditate on it day and night so you will be sure to obey everything written in it. Well, if you're only reading your word Sundays, no wonder you fell Monday through Saturday. Easily you fell. And it says here, only then will you prosper and succeed in all you do. You want to succeed in everything that you do? You want to prosper in all these areas of your life? These plans, these gifts that God put in you, the, the, these ambitions that you have, the, the, the things you want to accomplish with your life because you have purpose? What does it say here? Meditate on it day and night. Be, be sure to obey everything written in it. Because we could all be hearers of the word, listeners of the word, but to be doers of it, to submit to it, to submit to God's authority, that's a, that's a different question. That's a different task. I could sit here and pretend to listen and have my AirPod in one ear. As I've seen youth in service, I'm like, bro, take that out of your ear. And I, it happens more than often. You'd be surprised. But listen and do it. Meditate on it. You know, I, was, I heard an example about this. You know, when cows, they, they eat their food. I didn't know this, but they actually chew on it for a long time. And then they swallow it, and they throw it back up into their mouth and start chewing it again because there's more nutrients that, that's in there. And then they do it again. They eat it, and then they disgusting as it is. They throw it back up, and they start chewing it on it again. So it isn't the first time, the second time you read your, the Bible verse. It might be the third time you spit that back in your mouth, and you're like, okay, there's more here. There's more revelation. There's more meditation that needs to happen here. Because we've all read John 3, 16, God, for God so loved the world, right? But when you feel like, man, God, you love me so much, that undeserving, that God, man, when, when, when Caesar opened up in the, in the morning and said, man, I'm so thankful for God, that, that spoke to my heart. And that encouraged me to be re mindful, like, man, thank you, Jesus, for, for what you did on the cross. And it was an encouragement. And in his spirit, I, I understood what you were saying, and it felt real deep. And I, and I was like, man, thank, thank you, God. Uh, let, let me be reminded to be thankful, what you did on the cross. Sometimes we just need to meditate on it a little bit. Go into that quiet place. Go, 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 with all the noise around, just, just shut everything off. We've been, I've been on social media for like a month now, and COVID died, and China's under invasion of, of bio, and things are happening. But nonetheless, the word of God, my concentration is undivided. My focus sharp like I, I understand the vision that God's putting in my heart the purposes does this make sense did y'all eat something this morning yeah y'all so I feel so so much tension this morning como dice el pastor siento tensión like dude everyone's like nah but but I love you guys you guys know that and God loves you and the word is is so powerful and I hope through this little series You'll learn to have, your, your devotion will increase. Your love will increase, your loyalty, your enthusiasm. Man, when I, when I read the word now, I get excited to see what God has for me. And I, sh I hope that we would share in that. So we'll end there.